This is a book review of Manhunter, Deluxe Edition by Archie Goodwin and Walter Simonson. Now it's a fairly thin book, 112 pages, come out obviously from DC Comics, come out in 2020 slash 2021, and just recently got it. Obviously hardback, but uh, you can see it's, like I say, fairly thin, and there's the uh, spine there. And it's also got some, it's got an introduction, it's also got some extras, really, really good book, and I'm just going to run through it. So what does it include? Well, it includes Manhunter's stories in Detective Comics 437 to 443. So it's very few, very few stories. But still, that doesn't matter, as long as it's a good story, of course. And it also includes 1999's Manhunter, the special edition. Now, I'm not certain if it includes everything. Maybe there's some things missing. I've noticed that online there was a couple of comments from saying there was a story missing. Really not certain if that's the case. Because I looked online on the Grand Comic Database and there's so many other Manhunters, so many different stories. Who knows which one? Third, fourth, fifth, sixth generations of Manhunters. But this is the Manhunter that uh, I grew up reading. So uh, just going to... Now I've got Detective Comics here, obviously, with the, the Manhunter story. I love these 100 page giants, always good. So, uh, oops, just rip it. That's the best way. Just trouble with it, some of these old issues. So you've got Manhunter there. It was like I say, very, very, another, another rip to it. Most of my comics never survived my uh, book reviews. They sort of uh, immediately destroy half of them. However, I think it's much nicer when it's in a deluxe edition. So, however, before I go any further, there's also an entry in here. Now this has got, this is a um, first issue specials, but it's a different Manhunter. This is the trouble with the Manhunter stories. You've got Manhunter here, and it's the Jack Kirby one. First issue Manhunter. So I'm not certain if that's the Manhunter that's been referred to that's missing. I don't know. But of course, Manhunter was also in here as well. Obviously I've just shown the earlier man, that Manhunter, but there was also, and I'm just gonna flick through, it's here somewhere. A very unusual story, but there's a, another Manhunter, obviously the Jack Kirby one. So now back to the book itself. Once I've just gone through all those, Manhunter. It's got a nice introduction, and also I'm just going to remove that. Very, very nice. You've got a lovely, beautiful cover there. And now, lovely introduction. And also, of course, the usual, let's have a look at the details here. All the various stories. It's got all the list of colorists, letterers, and all those sort of people. All very important inkers. And also, of course, other people there. The story itself, well, I'm just going to read the back. Some of the bit in the back here. 1930s, Avenger of Paul Kirk was... Ah, sorry, I just showed that bit. Obviously, 19, 19, it's more 1940s. I don't know why they say 1930s, but 1940s. Maybe there were some stories in the 1930s as well. Who knows? Anyway, 1946, Kirk vanished, and he was in suspended animation. A bit like Captain America. However, he was revived, and he leaves a trail of dead assassins. He goes around, and also there's Interpol agent Christine St. Clair pursues the secret of the Manhunter's return. Now... Manhunter now, instead of just being an average guy, he's pretty strong. Also, he's near enough immortal. He can revive himself, he can sustain injuries, and he can revive a bit like Wolverine. So this is quite a similarity there. The actual stories. Well, the artwork is superb. All the way through, obviously, the last I've shown introduction, Archie Goodwin there. And you've got Manhunter. I say, I love these books. I prefer them. The old comics are great. I love the old comics. One, they fall to pieces when I read them. And they're not in great condition now, but it's uh, seeing it like this is much nicer on clean, super clean paper. And you've got a manhunter there. You can see straight away he's got a few arrows in him. So he's obviously uh, gone to the usual monastery, a bit like Doctor Strange or something, Iron Fist. They always go to these monasteries and there's always people that are, there's some sort of guns involved and everything. He's virtually unstoppable. But of course he's facing quite an implacable enemy. This is Council trying to rule the world and of course he's trying to stop him of course and of course you've got other support characters that are very useful and also other characters in the story that are not so helpful so you've got very very short stories i think they're about like eight pages or something that sort of thing so you've got manhunter there 
The artwork is absolutely superb. Coloring is really, really good. I love the coloring. I love the panel structure as well. I mean, the panel structure is great. Look at that. I mean, you really got a lot of panels for your money there. I mean, it's um, 12, 13, 13 panels on that page. You've got a lovely sort of whole heaps of information as well, which is very, very good. And this is all the way through. And then there's a special guest in the final, well, not final, final, final one before the final. You've got good old Batman. That's what I'm saying. So he turns up, similar sort, obviously, to the Manhunter. Now, why this wasn't done as a sort of brave and the bold, who knows? But uh, it's uh, still a, a really nice to see Batman in the story. You have the usual conflicts initially with whenever superheroes seem to meet up, they always seem to have a punch up. Unless they've met before, of course, then they're good friends and they go have a cup of coffee or something. But instead, they always wanted a bit of a punch up. However, the final story, and it's quite a satisfying story, this. This is the one thing about this that's nice. It didn't go on for 50 issues. It didn't have complex crossovers or anything like that. This is a story that's resolved, sorted out in a really nice way. Not saying what happens, the story, but it's a nice, good conclusion, which is always, I think, really great in a book. When you buy a book, it is the complete collection. Didn't say complete collection, but it's a complete collection. I don't know what I say about all the other Manhunters afterwards, whether they were related in some way or not. Who knows? I've never read anything. But the last one, Archie Goodwin, they, I think they worked on it and they worked on it, but it was never finished totally by him. There was no, there's no dialogue. It's all silent all the way through. And I think that just absolutely works amazing. Just beautiful because you've just got the panels. You don't need, you just don't need it. Don't need any writing. It's just a great story. Beautiful artwork. I think Walter Simonson's artwork is always superb. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Thor especially. I love his Thor. And then you've got some uh, bonus material at the back. Here you've got Manhunter. I don't know which one this one is. Issue one, it says. And also you've got obviously a nice sketch there. And you've got some other bonus material. It's very nice sketches, etc. And you've also got a good old who's who as well. And then finally, you've got an afterword by Walter Simonson, which really finishes the book off really nicely. And also biography at the back. I think this is just an absolute gem. I really, really love this book. Manhunter is a series that I thoroughly enjoyed back in the 1970s, because they were all 73, 74. So with these uh, good old detective comics, they're not difficult to buy, but they are quite expensive because they're 100 page giants. A lot of people like them, 100 page giants. Some people don't like, actually I was reading the letters pages and lots of people were putting a lot of comments saying that they didn't like the 100 page giant because of the reprints, the golden age reprints. That was the reason I liked the 100 page giant. So, but however, some of the other reprints were not so good. I wish they'd actually gone for, because they've got Hawkman there. Why didn't they put a golden age Hawkman? That would have been so much nicer. Instead, or a couple more Manhunter stories. That would have been nice. However, this is good. And to be honest, I think this is even better. I love this beautiful hardback edition. Of course, it would be better if it had been massive, oversized gallery edition. Totally, totally recommended. 